Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. A second faster, written for writing prompt 80. Raktor had been sent to this planet to help maintain order in the new colony that they'd set up here. He was an experienced Kotovorian general who had earned the respect of his subordinates. Currently, he was staring at a hollow display showing five destroyers, twenty cruisers, and three carriers with innumerable smaller craft inside. This was a convoy meant to break through the planet's defenses and either capture or kill anyone who resisted on the planet, and to do it quickly. They were also obviously Sumalatan ships. Kotovorians had been negotiating with the Sumalitans for a week now. They wanted to use the star as a starbase, allowing for easier trade and greater military presence in the area. The only issue is that it required some of the planet as building material, including the one Raktar was currently standing on. Raktar had been meeting with the Kotovorian Council, who were drawing up new plans and agreements on trade and military activities for the Sumalitans. The Sumalitans had had an issue with every plan that they'd proposed so far. That's when they got the final offer from the Sumalitans. Unconditional surrender, and they wouldn't raise the planet. Raktar ordered an immediate scan of the surrounding space and discovered the convoy. The entire negotiation had just been a ploy to buy time. The council sent out a request for help immediately after seeing the convoy, but Raktar already knew that there was no help out there. The similar turn convoy was only two weeks away, where the next nearest ships were three weeks away. It was a human convoy of only ten cruisers. The human sent an immediate reply, We'll be there to help as quickly as we can. While the grand gesture, it was of little hope. The human would arrive in a ready wrecked planet and then would promptly get wiped out. It was still more than anyone else had offered. The humans had been a bit of a strange race in the galaxy. They weren't that dangerous or crafty, nor did they cause more problems than most other races. It's just, whenever we questioned them about these issues, they would just say that it wasn't them, but some other group. However, it was just another group of humans. They didn't seem to have the same issue when it was a good deed. They seemed to be saying that they were all spreading throughout the galaxies as many species, managing to conquer space travel while still competing against one another. The humans appeared to care little for what you were, whether that was a human or an alien. You could be an enemy or an ally. The council sent out a reply. We graciously accept this offer of assistance and will be forever grateful for your help. An empty thanks for an empty assistance. Raktar worked on solving the problem at hand, the end of his world. However, no solutions came to mind. He sent out a surprise attack with his fastest missiles, but the Sumalitans were already ready and the missiles were easily intercepted. Days date by, with Raktar trying to get different tricks, hoping to slip through the crack in their armor. However, the Kotovorian world was then in range of the Sumalitans' missiles, forcing them to activate their shields. Now, only able to hide like a turtle in its shell, the Sumalitans continued firing missiles none of which would destroy the planet, but each would cripple the defense shield. As they bombarded the world, the Similitans' convoy slowly creeped forward until two weeks had passed, and they sat on the coat of Orion's doorstep, with the destroyers almost fully charged. Raktar stood at his hollow display as he had been every day in the last two weeks, severely sleep-deprived, but still searching for solutions. The Similitan cruisers kept up the barrage, forcing our shields up. As a Raktar stared at the display, showing the scans of the battlefield, he thought he saw something briefly blink into existence behind the Submilitan ships. It was too small to be a ship and was only there for a second, but Raktar still leaned in, focusing on that area. Soon hundreds of the little things were blinking into existence and then disappearing. Then a big red dot appeared at the same point as the Submilitan cruiser, a direct hit. The Submilitan convoy was being bombarded. Give me a visual shot of what just happened, Raktar barked out, and soon there was an image of a Sumalitan cruiser on the display. In slow motion, Raktar watched a missile coasting in. Each blip of light must have been the final course correction for the missile, gliding the rest of the way to avoid being detected. Whoever had shot these had managed to get complete blindside attack on the Sumalitan convoy. 
Most of the ships didn't even have time to activate their shields. As if to answer everyone's thoughts on who their mysterious savior was, the transmission line cracked to life. This is the United Mars 45th Patrol Squad. We made it as quick as we could, the transmission line said. The United Mars was a human faction, as they called them, with their main base being on the fourth planet in the original human solar system. The patrol squads didn't carry heavy weapons. They were mostly there to help clear out asteroids, help ships that ran into trouble, and set up minor squabbles between groups. Raktor held down the transmission button and said, We weren't expecting anyone to make it in time. We appreciate the help. It won't be enough to take down the destroyers, but it gives us a fighting chance. That was a lie. Even with taking down or crippling all the cruisers and carriers, the five destroyers would still fire and raise most of the planet before we could stop them. Raktar hoped that the humans had advanced more than just their propulsion systems. Hopefully, they had a secret weapon with them too. The transmission line sprang to life again. We couldn't leave you out and dry. We know how hard it is to set up on a new world. I do have one request, though. Could you send out a rescue squad to come pick up the rest of my boys? Raktar didn't know what to make of this. How could the human be so certain of his victory? But also so certain that he wouldn't be able to land himself. Before you could think of the answer, though, one of the reconnaissance officers spoke up. They're, they're, they're going too fast. They won't be able to stop. In a split second, Raktar realized that the human hadn't managed any propulsion advances. They had simply fired their engines without leaving enough time to stop. But why? They should know that they won't be able to stop the destroyers with the weapons they had. Then it clicked. Show me their trajectory, Raktar shouted at the reconnaissance officer. In a second, it was up. The 40-foot patrol squad was making a direct line towards the destroyers. Raktar jumped up onto the transmission. Change your trajectory immediately. You can still just do a flyby. A reply came back from the human ship, but we didn't understand what it meant. Then the first ship slammed into the destroyer. The simulatons had already put the shields up on the destroyers, but it didn't matter. The shields were meant to disrupt missiles and take small explosions, something like a nuclear bomb. It stood no chance against the force of a cruiser at full speed. The destroyer's armor didn't fare much better as the cruiser slammed into it, ripping it apart. A second cruiser followed up, smashing into the same destroyer. Each of the human cruisers smashed into the destroyers on kamikaze runs. In just a few seconds, where the destroyers had stood, there was just scrap metal. The whole room sat in dead silence. Just a little while ago, everyone had been preparing for death and the death of everyone on the planet. Now they were handed a victory on a silver platter. Raktar finally broke the silence. Prepare the rescue mission. Should we ask for permission from the council? An officer asked. No, Raktar said before sitting in his chair. There was a rush of activity as everyone jumped to work to show the gratitude. A scan showed several emergency lifeboats sending out distress signals from the direction the human convoy had come from. A few days later, the emergency lifeboats were picked up and the whole story learned. The 40 foot patrol squad had jettisoned everything that they could to lighten their ships, which included the crew. The only thing left on the ships were missiles, fuel, and the captain. They all cheered when they heard the attack had been successful, but it was nothing when we told them the captain's final words. The entire 40 foot patrol squad went wild. You think I a motherfucker? End of story. Story number two. No Missiles Fly, written by Rednal97. What the hell was that attack? Dirac, with the ship lord of the Badu, a heavy bomber corvette, demanded to know. One of the officers answered. The trial, my lord. Uh, the, its reactor went supercritical, and uh, we were too close when it blew. Damage report. My lord, only medium structural damage. But we lost engine number three and five, and our dorsal and starboard point defenses are down. So we can't keep up with the formation and are vulnerable to an attack. Ah, oh, bosh, touch. Empty the payload bays and head for the nearest job point. My lord, the mission is now a no-go. And if you want to escape from these damned apes, we need to be as fast and as nimble as possible. Just release the bombs. Don't arm them, though. We don't want a minefield in this part of the void. Understood, my lord. Uh, releasing payload. Inert detonators. 
Good, now get us out of here. If the humans realize our situation... Another officer cuts in. My lord, enemy hunter-cutter approaching. It seems he knows exactly where our defenses are crippled. In one moment, every conversation on the bridge died into complete silence. HKs were hard to deal with on a good day, but with a limping, basically defenseless ship, it spelled certain doom. The shipyard was the first to speak. All the stress and hectic gone and replaced with an eerie calm. It was an honor to serve with you all. And may the Durlock judge you fairly. He turned to his tactical officer. How long until we are in firing range? We're in range in six, five, four, three, two, one. Nothing. No explosion. No lock on alarm. No launch warning. Nothing. Why doesn't that damn human shoot? Unknown, my lord, but it matches speed and heading approximately 200 meters to starboard. Comms, put a video feed on the screen. Yes, my lord. What is it doing? Evasive maneuvers. This time was the pilot answered. I don't believe so. If I remember correctly, they have an emergency communication protocol based on the craft movements. Let me check. Um, uh, oh, here. It, it wants us to follow, presumably to a human carrier, where we would be taken prisoner. I think we can all agree that we don't want to accept that. The ship you know, looked around the bridge, only to see signs of agreement all around. Signal back. Negative. Yes, my lord. He responds with confirmation, but neither splits nor attacks. There, what is this ape thinking? Whatever. Head for the jump point. He must just let us go. Understood, my lord. The hunter killer is still following in the defense blind spot. The tense silence held for a few minutes until an officer cried out. Where did that come from? My lord, the destroyer up ahead. We're in its firing range in twenty seconds. No way that we can get out in that time. Then the pilot. Hunter Kittler reducing its distance, now less than 20 meters off a hull. What? Is it trying to ram us? No. The only reason that would make remote sense would be that it's impossible for the destroyer to shoot without also damaging the HK. A Hunter Kittler protecting an enemy? I can't believe it. We're out of destroyer's range now. One minute to jump. On the screen, you could still see the human ship. Now, close enough to make out the pilot in the cockpit. It looked straight into the camera, made a sharp salute, and turned its craft away from the Badoo and accelerated away. Everyone on the bridge stared at the screen until it was bathed in a dazzling colors of slip sprays. No one will ever believe what just happened. Absolute madmen, all of them, but madmen with honor. End of story. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Bob the Dragon, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigan 95, Hudig Yol, Meridian 117, Olivia, Jordan Buxborn, Angry Marine, Albarden Gaster, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.